Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Yuka Force, and today we're going to be taking a look at another game that's out there and just recently launched. It's made by Nessie's Games and it's called Infinite Lagrange. Now, yeah, you're probably wondering why are we covering this game? Well, mostly because I enjoy spaceships. Mostly. Now, if you've all been familiar with the content that I put out, it's mostly EVE Echoes. But I think this game deserves a chance at least to be reviewed and to investigate what's it about. If you don't know what Lagrange means, eh, Lagrange was a mathematician and a physicist who basically discovered a bunch of math formulas and some points in space where you can achieve a special orbit uh, located between two celestial bodies. In our case, the large points are actually located in four specific locations between Earth and the Sun. And if you put any object into one of these Lagrange points, they will basically sit there like they're sitting still, but moving around with the entire system. The system being formed by the two Lagrange generators, which are the Sun and, of course, the planet, in our case, Earth. So what does this game tell us? Well, humanity, after investigating these Lagrange points, discovered there's some residual warp phenomena located inside of that, so they started exploiting it and eventually figured out that they could use the Lagrange points into using warp technology and warping from Earth to very distant celestial bodies, such as colonizing other solar system. But <laughs> guess what? Humanity did what humanity does best, annihilating itself through conflict. And this basically uh, started it all out. Humanity started building these massive gates called Lagrange gates, and eventually, after colonizing too much space, well, humanity said, we're this faction, and some other part of humanity said, well, no, we're this other faction, so let's start clashing, and they killed each other off until they blew up a bunch of these Lagrange gates, and what do you know, the whole system collapsed. The Lagrange network that was kind of powering and connecting all these gates, and these massive gates, and eventually, they also come back to being isolated. And just recently, at least that's what the law says, people had started going back seeking the Lagrange network, trying to reconnect with the other humans. And they've built up again these massive gates, but guess what? If we don't manage to exterminate ourselves the first time, or the second time, or third time's the charm, because immediately after the Lagrange network was powered back on, humanity started fighting again with itself. Way to go, guys! <laughs> so this is pretty much an intro into the Lagrange Grand Scheme. This will be the first video. I'll probably do some more and uh, try to explore and do some tutorials on how to evolve or how to progress through the game. Well, if you don't know what the game is, well, you're gonna find out right here. Lagra Infinite Lagrange is a space building, or at least build your base genre, I don't know if it falls into the 4X category, because the 4X also has like some condition, actually the condition, the win conditions focus mostly on economic and trade, while in Infinite Lagrange is you just evolve, evolve, evolve until you engulf everybody else and you destroy everybody else, or at least that what I think this game is based upon. Nonetheless, it's pretty easy to hop onto it. You just download it and immediately after choosing your preferred method of sign-in, you will be prompted to select one of the servers that are currently running. Now, the servers are actually solar systems inside the Milky Way. They're all connected through the Lagrange network throughout these massive Lagrange gates. So you pick a server and you hop into it. My advice, peek or server that is always new, just start it up. Why is that? Because if you go into an old server, you'll get inside with people that have already progressed and the gap will be too big for you to even start doing something because probably right immediately after your beginner shield, your protection drops um, and wears off, you'll be attacked and destroyed and completely eliminated from the server itself. 
So the idea is to pick a newly created server, hop onto it and you will immediately begin with a base and some starting fleet and some starting ships. Now this is not Evacos, it's not a space simulator or at least a real time strategy space simulator. It is real time and everything is tied into time. But being a build your base game, you're going to find stuff like this you know, unit has a specific time limit to build, this specific construction needs this time to build, and then you build up your fleet and you do various stuff like go mine or go punch other people. Perfectly normal, exactly what humanity does best. Now I know what you're asking, is that most of these games are pay to win? Well this is kind of pay to win, but it's all ephemeral. And uh, why am I saying that is basically once a server like reaches maturity and everything dies and there's only one conqueror or only one alliance dominating, you know, the, that server is kind of ended because there's no one in inside of it to, to do any other stuff. So everything that you've spent and you've did like to do your pay to win, well if you hop onto another server you start from scratch or at least somewhere down the road and you have to pay it all over again. You'll not get your stuff from one server to another. You start off with a basic base again where with uh, basic units and you start evolving again and again. So if you are the pay to win kind of type, yeah, this could be a massive sinkhole for you. But the game has some interesting features when it comes to progression or at least speeding up stuff. You've got some tokens that keep regenerating automatically and they're being generated by your base. You can increase the number and the speed at which they are generated. So pretty much this is an offer for being free to play. And if you're casual and you do enjoy a base building game and about spaceships, this is probably the game for you. Honestly, me, I haven't invested anything into this game yet because I'm really interested to see how it evolves. This game is still young and it's still receiving updates and balances and stuff. I think Sovereign already uh, touched on it a couple of months ago, but since base building games are pretty much not my favorite genre, I didn't care about it much, at least at first. But given it has spaceships, I really wanted to try it out and to see what can you actually do inside the game. So let's hop into the server that I'm in, and by the way, I'm in Aquarius 62. If you click on this specific icon, you'll see that there's plenty of servers you can join, and you can always see when the server was started, and try to pick one that is right for you. So I'm in Aquarius 62, and it opened on 6th of July 2021. So if we go inside, um, you'll already see that I have a base that I've set up and pretty much try to learn the mechanics here and there and try to understand how do you navigate through the menus and how do you do whatever. There's a bunch of stuff that you can do in this game. The first one that you'll probably want to do immediately after getting set up is to build your facilities and to start popping up miners. Uh, pop out the uh, mining vessels that you send to the asteroids right near uh, your base to start collecting resources. The resources are on the top side of the screen which is the mineable stuff. On the left side we've got the uh, metal, we've got the crystals and you've, we've got the deuterium. And on the right side of the screen is pretty much the semi-premium currencies and of course the premium currencies themselves. There's plenty of space in the middle of the screen uh, and on the left side you've got some information about what's going on right now with the base and your operations. We'll talk about that in a moment and what they actually represent. Bottom screen is pretty much your chart and a way to locate your base if you go around way too far from the base you can just click on it and it'll pinpoint your location and get the screen back to your base if you want to go inside. If you have the base in your view you just click on the base button and you get inside and basically can start building off stuff. Now if we click on the construction components 
there's a lot of base building that you can do. If you're really into this kind of games, you can start off from the first expansion. Uh, you, every expansion has a prerequisite of several structures that you need to build or get to a specific level. And then you start building them, and then you start expanding, and after the expansion finishes, you can start building up all the other attachments and you expand your economical uh, and your military sides in parallel because you kind of need to. It's not like you can do all trade like an evil line, just sit in a, or Eve Echoes or whatever, which is a space sim game, and you just sit in a station and you dock and trade and do whatever. You don't even need to get out of the station. In here, you actually need to mine, you have to defend, and you have to attack other players. And of course, generate income or upgrades by uh, engaging in combat with NPCs. One thing that I like about this um, base building, at least in Infinite Lagrange, is compared to other base building games, I find this specific feature to be extraordinary. When you are expanding in other base building games, the other construction uh, options are pretty much locked because you can only build one building at a time or two buildings at a time. Here you can build two buildings at a time and whenever you're doing the expansion, uh, the expansion has a separate uh, building slot. Like when you do the expansion, the entire base does not get locked. You can build other types of buildings or upgrade them uh, while the expansion is being built, like in my case, the expansion already has like 2 hours and 40 minutes remaining, but I'm still building stuff. As you can see, uh, in the bottom left, uh, right side of the screen, uh, I'm already upgrading a couple of um, attachments to the base that I have already built, and I'm just, I don't know, doing stuff. I'm not sitting still and have to wait 12 hours of one day just doing nothing. So this was kind of the general review on the base building mechanics in Linfinite Lagrange. Uh, we will get back to this and with some tutorials on how to improve and upgrade your system and your base properly. Uh, we'll do a couple of tutorials just to get you started and of course if there's room for more and there's actually demand for more, I can pretty much do that. But for now let's go through the general mechanics of the game. Let me know if you guys enjoy this or not. Moving out of the base, we go back to the system itself, and as I mentioned, the server is an entire solar system. So if you zoom out, you can see there's a bunch of stuff spread all across the solar system. It's ready for you to explore, and the space is so big, it's actually very, very big. Imagine just me from this specific beacon uh, moving to this portion of the screen, which is highlighted with the uh, square, with the orange square. If I try to go from the white dot where I'm at to that location, it'll take me around one or two hours. So traversing the entire solar system can take a lot. So this was the map, and as you can see, it's very, very big. So how are the other features of the game? actually implemented in terms of, let's say, doing stuff. We've seen how you build your base. How do you do like combat? How do you do NPCs? How do you mine? How do you perform tech leveling or at least researching new stuff? Well, pretty much the game is based around operations or the term operation. And it's basically a circle that you put on a map and this kind of instructs the game that you're going to operate in that sector. Which is pretty nice. Uh, it requires you to manage your operations because you've got a limited number of them. And you can increase that number by upgrading your base, of course. But it kind of forces you to spread your operations properly across the map so you um, benefit from them as much as possible. Not spawning operations everywhere and just sending ships all over the place. So you need to be really calculated with how you place these. So once you set up an operation, if you set an operation inside a mining field where there's asteroids and stuff, well, you're pretty much going to allow ships that can mine to go through that operation and to start mining. If you put an operation over a, an NPC location, well, you're pretty much going to allow ships that are in that location to, to engage with enemy fleets. Now, yeah, I said fleets. There's no single spaceship combat in this game. Uh, you can do that, but it's dumb. 
the mining indeed is carried out by single spaceships but if you do want to be successful at combat be it versus NPC or be it versus other players you kind of need fleets so you need to go to the base go build some ships like a lot of ships initially you'll find that a lot being just a small number you'll need to upgrade your base constantly to allow for bigger bigger fleets uh, and it's all capped by a command points um, number which is given by how big your base is and this is like your cap limit it's like in Warcraft or other uh, RTS game you've got the maximum number of units that your base can support so you build that you form a fleet and what you do with it well you just click on this this is a level 5 armed privateer recon fleet whatever here you can find some information on what you can obtain if you destroy it so i will just attack i'll just select my fleet which has 36 ships it's got 21 destroyers 15 frigates and 12 corvettes I already have an operation in that area because there's a ship of mine that's mining in the operation so the operation has already been cre created if you already have an operation in that area don't need to create a new one you can just use it and do mining and combat inside of it as well so I'm just going to confirm and what's going to happen is my fleet is going to warp away from my uh, base and it's going to go all the way over here and engage with the enemy fleet. So this is pretty much how combat and mining goes. As you can see, there's some mining ships that don't even care about this NPC being there. <laughs> they better not because they're just mining ships and don't have any defense uh, or weapons. They have some, but they they can be ignored. So what else you can do in this game? Well, you can uh, pretty much get new ships and get new modules and upgrade blueprints. It all revolves around blueprints. According to law, once the Lagrange network was re-established, a consortium of whatever governing space nation said there's going to be no more weird stuff. Everything is going to be flying generic from now on. Generic is... I don't know, it's a weird concept, but pretty much it's everything that anyone can use. It should be the same, like to give people uh, a fair chance when, I don't know, fighting against other people. However, there's black market stuff and you can get those which are better and they're kind of unique. And it costs a lot more to build and it costs a lot more to evolve. But um, yeah, this is where the pay to win kind of wins the deal but if you're not you can also get them for free but you just need some luck to unlock the proper stuff because um let's head over to the menu and you'll see immediately what i'm trying to tell you here we go into the research tab and you can only research two stuff at the same time no more no less of course less you can just do no research at all because at some points you will find yourself with no container to open uh, the containers are called research containers or, or tech boxes you buy one of these and you can buy them with some premium currencies or you can buy them with some other semi premium currencies or you can just uh, collect them from the daily panel but it's not actually daily it is the more you're active inside the game the quicker your partnership agreement, uh, like the free-to-play um, option, starts increasing and it generates points and you unlock more of these items. Of course, this is the top row. The bottom row requires you to pay some money and to unlock everything, of course. Um, just like in Eve Echoes, if you've played it with the events, with the battle passes, it's pretty much the same thing. Now what do you do with these boxes? Well, you get them and you start opening them and you get some blueprints, or you get some tech files you can use to increase some stats uh, and you get some research points. Now, the more advanced ship it is, the more your base needs to be upgraded in order to support the facility that needs to build it. But of course, until you manage to build that high at your base uh, construct, that's it. You just stay with the default ships. Well. Yes and no. You see, default ships, or at least generic ships, and every other kind of blueprint has that improvement that you can perform on it 
using tech points. Now, tech points, you get some um, microchips when you do NPC combat and when you finish some quests and whatever. And these combat chips pretty much going to allow you to upgrade your tech points. You, uh, a ship can support up to maximum of 50 tech points, if I'm not mistaken. And you, once you start consuming these, like I'm doing right now, I'm investing six experience microchips into the frigate type vessel blueprint that I have. I'm gonna just confirm and I got another tech point extra. This is going to allow me to use the tech points to upgrade either the weapon system or the engine system or the armor system. Of course, there can be multiple variants of the same ship. You just need to unlock them or to find them inside these tech boxes that we've shown you in the previous menus with the boxes and the research stuff. And you can get multiple types or it's multiple configurations of the same ship that perform on different roles. This is a multi-role. We also have an armor type which has less damage but more armor. And of course a recon type which has more speed, shitty damage and shitty armor but just moves faster. So initially you will only be able to build frigates and starting after that as long as you keep unlocking those boxes you'll eventually find more tech blueprints and more vessels that you can unlock research and then use but in my case for example I can only build up to destroyer. I cannot build cruisers yet because I'm waiting for an expansion to happen and I've got plenty of cruisers which just happen to drop from these research boxes. Every ship has so many details and so many information it's easy for you to get lost in all these data numbers that you can see right here. One thing that I found useful and at least easy to use is just clicking on just to make sure what, what this ship is best at clicking on the uh, weapon itself clicking on it again and then clicking the information panel and you'll see the attack priority and what exactly it prefers to shoot at so if you're getting like some ships that prefer to shoot battleships and if you're going to use them to shoot down frigates or corvettes well don't do that because it's pretty obvious that these ships were built or at least the, the purpose is to do uh, shoot some other things that what you're trying to do and they will probably die miserably against smaller ships or at least they will fail mis miserably using this weapon system against them so this all comes down to the strategy of building your fleet so building several of these or uh, combine them with some destroyers and put some frigates inside just to make a fleet that can withstand at least a general attack or a general combat in, in, in this sense and not fail miserably in case there's just one ship that cannot be tackled and destroyed by your entire fleet and every, uh, over the course of two hours that ship systematically <laughs> destroys every ship in your fleet. So yeah, this is something that you need to take into consideration and I think this is pretty much the rock, paper, scissors that every build uh, your base game has of course I'm talking about clash of clans you do a uh, attacking force and you have multiple types of units and each unit is better against one type of unit and they can get their shit pushed up by some other type of unit so it's pretty much down to the rock paper scissors and how you combine your fleet and how exactly what do you want to engage with that fleet? If you're trying to like destroy stations, well of course you probably go with ships that do prefer destroying stations and have bigger, way better damage versus stations than just something uh, that's small, tiny, does good damage versus uh, subsystems on specific ships but fail miserably on, I don't know, torpedo attacks and stuff like that. So this is pretty much a general review of Infinite Lagrange and what you can do in this game. Of course, we will be tackling uh, more tutorials in the upcoming weeks. We'll probably do one video per week and uh, try to familiarize you with what you can specifically do in some specific situation, like how do you upgrade your base uh, naturally in the best way, how can you play in free-to-play mode without spending any dime on this game and just enjoying it, but uh, for the sake of it being a game which in itself is supposed to be enjoyable and of course while can you research or how to distribute points how can you better create your fleet and what this game has in like hidden mechanics and how can you perform various stuff 
So that was it for today. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers. The desire to venture is never extinguished. And the Lagrange Network is lighting up once again. Home beckons, yet journey awaits. The path is yours to decide.